رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا اله الا الله اللهم اجعلنا من الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر امين يا رب العالمين In today's khutbah I have quite an ambitious goal I don't normally do this but given some recent events I felt very compelled to try and make an attempt Usually when I give a khutbah it's about an ayah or two ayat Today what I'm going to try to do is give you a khutbah about a couple of pages of the Quran but uh, We'll see how that goes and see if that even happens. But before I do, I want to give you a little bit of background. Allah Azza wa talks about Musa alayhi salam and his struggle many places in the Quran. And one of the individuals that we are introduced to within the story of Musa alayhi salam is one of his friends. A friend that was part of the Egyptian military at the time. He used to work under Fir'aun. He was actually even, you could consider him one of the generals, one of the police chiefs at the very least because it was a police state. And because of his friendship with Musa alayhi salam, he had actually become a Muslim. But he didn't share this with anybody. He was quietly a Muslim. And this is the same person that helped Musa alayhi salam escape when he was trying to get out of Egypt. In Surah Ghafir, what Allah Azza wa tells us about this man, by the way, the common term used for him in our tafsir literature, because his name is not mentioned, is Mu'minu Ali Fir'aun. The believer from the people of Fir'aun. The believer from the lineage of Fir'aun. Something happens. There's some, something that, that didn't happen before in the career of Musa alayhi salam happens that reaches a breaking point. And that's the breaking point that I'm going to talk to you about today. Essentially, the only person that had a soft corner for Musa alayhi salam in any position of power was Fir'aun himself. Allah Azza wa Jal told us about Musa alayhi salam wa alqaytu alayka mahabbatan minni. I have thrown on to you a special love that comes from me. And that part of that love was that even when Fir'aun saw him for the first time, he fell in love with this boy. Even though that boy belonged to Banu Israel, he belonged to the race of the slaves. And you could tell from the color of his skin, he's not from, the, from their class. But even then, he fell in love with this child and he was raised as a prince. In the, in, the, in the care of the Pharaoh himself under Fir'aun. So even when Musa alayhi salam came back and challenged Fir'aun and there's clashes happening, it was that love that he originally had for Musa alayhi salam that kept him from killing. This is a man you already know, this is a man that has no discrimination when it comes to killing. We already know that he kills countless babies every other year. So it's not like he has any sort of hesitation in his mind about committing murder. Especially when someone walks into his own court and challenges him to his face, the most obvious repercussion of that should be execution. But for some reason, Musa alayhi salam keeps getting spared. And the reason for that is actually something articulated in the Quran, the fact that he had a soft corner in his heart that he could not even help himself. On that note, it's a side note, but an important note nonetheless. Allah azza wa jal controls the hearts even the heart of Fir'aun. And there are things Allah will put in his heart, even he cannot deny from Allah. Even he cannot deny. So Allah puts to his service all of his creation. Even the enemies of Allah will serve Allah's plan when he wants them to. Nothing escapes the will of Allah and the power of Allah. Nothing. Not even Fir'aun. Not even the position of power he's in. But regardless, he's putting up with Musa alayhi salam which gives Musa alayhi salam some free reign to do his activities, to spread the message of Islam, to deliver you know, the message not only to the, to the people of Fir'aun, but also to the Israelites at the same time. And this is becoming a problem, because essentially nobody else ever in the history of the empire has ever spoken out against the king and lived to tell about it. It's never happened before. And this guy is going around, alayhi salam, is going around and he's creating this ruckus when he's calling people to worship one God that is directly, it's not just a religious message. You have to understand, this is also a political message because Fir'aun claims himself to be God himself and his political power is only legitimized because he deems himself a God. You don't question him because questioning his political power is the same as questioning God himself. That is the political game that he's played with his people. And now when Musa alayhi salam is calling people to al-ilah, 
Allah Azza wa Jal, Rabbukum wa Rabbu Abaikum wal Awaleen. When he's doing that, he is shaking the political foundations of that society. This is problematic. And even though Fir'aun is tolerating it, he is realizing that he can only tolerate it so much before the government itself might collapse. And so a breaking point occurs. And when that breaking point occurs, the first step Fir'aun takes is one of the ugliest things you will ever hear about in any history. Listen to this. فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ مِنْ عِنْدِنَا قَالُوا اقْتُلُوا أَبْنَاءَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ وَاسْتَحْيَوا نِسَاءَهُمْ We already know before that he used to kill the boys, kill the baby boys every other year and let the women live. That's a different part of the history. But when, it, when things reached a boiling point, he came out with a new policy. And the new policy was, everyone who has believed in Musa, because he's been doing his da'wah, every single family that has believed in Musa salam, they are enemies of the state, and we need to send them a message, don't go kill them, go kill their children. Don't kill them, don't kill the enemies of the state, don't kill people who believe in Musa. Kill their children. This was one of the ugliest military tactics, one of the most demonic, satanic tactics ever used in the history of the world, that in order to get back at your enemy, you don't kill your enemy, you kill your enemy's children. And you have today in the world, the Muslim world, you have today in Pakistan, people that in the name of, just out of the hatred of their enemy, they were willing to kill their children. They were willing to do that. These are people that don't follow the sunnah of our beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wa You know, I was, I, when I heard the news, I had to pull over. I had to sit there and cry for a while. I couldn't drive. Those are our kids. Those are our children. Murdered at the hands of people who say, La ilaha illallah. This is the most, I can't even begin to understand. And I don't, I don't even try to go on social media or check what the newest release updates are and things like that. And somebody sent me an image. Somebody sent me an image of one of these people justifying it, saying that there's a hadith in Bukhari and he's quoting this. These people have no right to even say the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If there's any sunnah these people are following, it is the sunnah of Fir'aun. That is the only sunnah they're following. Kill the children of your enemies. That's all they're doing. And so I wanted to make mention of that even though that's not my subject today. The policy he comes out with is, it is let, the, let, the children, let the children be killed and let the women live. وَمَا كَيْدُ الْكَافِرِينَ إِلَّا فِي ضَلَالَ And the, the, the scheme may, hatched by disbelievers, nothing will come of it except it will fall to waste. And it's because this is the breaking point, and his own ministers, Fir'aun's own ministers are, have had it. They're like, this is not going to last. We need to bring this revolt to an end. This needs to be crushed. At the head, we need to kill the, the person in charge of this movement, which is Musa alayhi salam. So then finally Fir'aun takes a step. And he says, وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنْ ذَرُونِي أَقْتُلْ مُوسَى وَلْيَدْعُ رَبَّهُ إِنِّي أَخَافُ أَنْ يُبَدِّلَ دِينَكُمْ Fine, let me kill Musa myself. He doesn't even tell his soldiers to do it. He doesn't tell the armies to do it. He said, I'll do it myself. Fine. You know why? Because his political party was starting to think maybe Fir'aun is weak, man. Maybe he's weak. Maybe he's too soft towards our enemy, which is Musa, because he has emotional attachments to him. He's not fit to lead. You know, if you have a military state, especially a dictatorship, and the military command starts talking about the commander-in-chief and saying he's gone soft, he's not tough enough to handle the, make the difficult decisions, you know what happens next? A military coup happens, and the guy on top gets killed. And even though Fir'aun is extremely powerful, if he gives the impression that he's weak, he will lose his power. And he may love Musa alayhi salam, but he loves his power a lot more. And so he makes a decision, I'll kill him myself. Why? Because that will crush the political opposition that might be brewing. That somebody might even get the impression that he's weak. You know, that he's not tough enough. By the way, this is politics to this day. What is, what is the motivation behind much of war or much of the policy of aggression? There are hawks within every party 
There are aggressors within every party that say he can't be our representative. He's not tough enough. He's not ready to do the hard thing. And so he's not... So many politicians, they don't go to war because they believe in war. They go to war because they want to hold on to their seat. Because they want to appease to their party. Our book is teaching us these games that Fir'aun played so long ago that are still played to this day. There's nothing new. This is nothing new. All of this has been taught to us in the Book of Allah. If we just paid attention. We see right through it. In any case, he says, well, يَدْعُوا رَبَّهُ Let him call on his Rabb. Let him make whatever dua he can. If he doesn't believe in me as his Rabb, then he has no protection from me. Let him get protection from his own Rabb. This is his words against Musa alayhi salam. إِنِّي أَخَافُ أَنْ يُبَدِّلَ دِينَكُمْ I'm really scared now that he's about to change your religion. He's going to change the religion of you people. In another place in the Quran, he said, وَيَذْهَبَا بِطَرِيقَتِكُمُ الْمُثْلَى He said, this man Musa and his friend, his brother Harun alayhim salam they don't say alayhim salam these people are going to get rid of your exemplary lifestyle. Don't let them continue spreading the message of Islam because it is a threat to your great lifestyle, your nation, your way of life is under threat because of this Islam. If you're truly, if you're patriots of your country, then you will not have Islam here. Sound familiar? <laughs> If you really love your country, Islam's the enemy. You know, so he made it a matter of national integrity. You might have to, you might change your religion. Your lifestyle is perfect as it is, and these people want to change it. Don't let them do that. They are the real traitors. Look at the audacity of this man. He goes and kills children and turns around and says, Don't let Musa go on, because if they do, then these people will the the, the Religion of the people will change and then they will cause corruption. Musa says, I believe in, and I'm going to go quickly now and read through, just listen to this speech. Musa says, I seek refuge in my master and your master from every arrogant one, the one who doesn't believe in the day on which all the records will be taken. And a man who believed, a believing man from within the descendants of Fir'aun. Who is Allah talking about? That general. So one of the generals is sitting in the parliament, is sitting in the inner circle of, of Fir'aun. And Fir'aun finally makes the announcement that he is going to kill Musa himself and his friend who had never shared anything about his Islam. He never told anybody he's a believer. When he heard that Musa السلام, is going to be killed, the Messenger of Allah, there's an attempt to kill a Messenger of Allah, he could not hide his Islam anymore. He came up and spoke out. And he spoke out. I want you to imagine this scene. It's the parliament of Fir'aun. It is the military commander sitting there. They are discussing how to get rid of the enemy and, and how Islam is a threat. And one of them raises his hand, stands up and says, I'm a Muslim. This is the scene that is painted. The shock waves that are sent inside that room. And so what does he say? أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهِ You are ready to kill a person who just says, My master is Allah. وَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ And so many clear proofs have come to you. You have no reason to reject this message anymore. وَإِنْ يَكُوا كَاذِبًا فَعَلَيْهِ كِذْبُهُ And by the way, if he is in fact a liar, then he will pay the price for his lie. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي مَنْ هُوَ مُسْرِفٌ كَذَّابٌ No doubt about it, Allah, He will not guide. He does not guide anyone who goes beyond limits and who keeps up making more and more lies. When he said مُسْرِفٌ كَذَّابٌ He was not talking about Musa alayhi salam. He was talking about Fir'aun. Fir'aun is a Musrif. Asrafa fil qatl. Fakayfa lan yakuna Musrifan. Asrafa fil qatl. He says Allah will not guide anybody who goes beyond limits. And, and Fir'aun had gone beyond limits. He had killed children. And then he says Allah will not guide someone who keeps on making lie after lie after lie. And that is what Fir'aun had done. Fir'aun had made numerous lies already. He called the Musa alayhi salam a magician, that didn't work. He called him, you know, a liar. He called him all kinds of things. And none of those accusations flew. He tried one after the other. He failed. His, his, his false propaganda kept failing on him. There are lots of people standing in the back. So you guys got to squeeze. Move over. Come on. Make room. So now, وَإِنْ يَكُوا صَادِقًا يُصِبْكُمْ بَعْضُ الَّذِي يَعِدُكُمْ 
إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي مَنْ هُوَ مُسْرِفٌ كَذَّابٍ If by the way he is telling the truth, then even if some of what he's warning you about might hit you right now. This is a state of emergency guys. Don't disbelieve in this messenger. Because if you, if you continue this, you know, this audacity against Allah, then some of the warnings he's giving you might even hit you right now. يَا قَوْمْ لَكُمُ الْمُلْكَ الْيَوْمِ My nation, you guys have the government in your control today. You guys have mulk today. ظَاهِرِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ You are the dominant party on the land. فَمَنْ يَنْصُرُنَا يَنْصُرُنَا مِنْ بَأْسِ اللَّهِ إِنْ جَاءَنَا Who's gonna help us against the war that comes from Allah if it, hits our, if it comes our way? You guys have government now, but if Allah wants, it'll go. تَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِمَّنْ يَشَاءُ مِمَّنْ تَشَاءُ قَالَ فِرْعَوْنَ مَا أُرِيكُمْ إِلَّا مَا أَرَى Fir'aun looks at, hears this speech and he's stunned. He's like, where is this coming from? And he says, I'm not trying to show you anything except what I see. I'm just trying to save this country. Clearly this guy is a traitor. And by the way, this man's speech was so powerful, apparently everybody else in the room started listening to him too. Even the other generals, you can tell from the look of people's faces when they're convinced of something. So Fir'aun is getting nervous in his own courtroom and he says, مَا أُرِيكُمْ إِلَّا مَا أَرَى And then he's like, he's convincing them, وَمَا أَهْدِيكُمْ إِلَّا سَبِيلَ الرَّشَادِ No, I'm, I'm not doing anything except I'm trying to guide you to the way that is right. The correct course of action that will save our nation. I'm talking about our national interest here. I'm looking out for national security. That's what I'm doing. By the way, this statement that Fir'aun made, he made it to his generals. And you need to understand a little bit about political science here. You know, in, because he's a dictator, because he's a dictator, he does not have to convince anyone of anything. He says, this is what we're going to do, and that's it. There's no debate. It's not a democracy. It's not a vote. It's not every, everybody's opinion is valuable. That's not the case. The fact that one of his own generals just right now defied him. The expectation was that he should kill him right then and there. He should have him arrested and removed and say, where were we? Let's continue our conversation. That does not happen. The fact that he says, no, 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 he's wrong. I'm trying to tell you the right thing. He's actually legitimizing the presence of that general. You know why? Because he realizes that the only strength he has is the loyalty of his generals. If he goes after one general, what are the other generals going to think? He's going after him today. He's going to go after me tomorrow. I'm, my, my position isn't safe either. And if they feel threatened, then they have no loyalty to Fir'aun. They can turn him around because they are the ones who practically control the military. You know, the, the, there's the top commander-in-chief commander and then there are people under him, the lieutenant commanders, these people, they're the ones who practically execute all the commands. So if they and the people, the, the soldiers who obey their commands, they have direct interaction with them, they have a loyalty to them. So if he calls them for mutiny, they're going to have mutiny. They're going to turn around. Fir'aun realizes actually he has now been put in a position of incredible weakness. He realizes it. And by the way, all the military might in the world, I need you to understand this point, all the military might in the world, and the thing that brings Fir'aun to his knees is the fact that a believer stood up and spoke the truth. That's all it took. He didn't have a military, he didn't have a weapon, he didn't have anything. He just had to use whatever position Allah had given him to stand up and speak the truth. And this man, who we don't even know his name, has a speech that is two, three pages in the Qur'an. We're not going to get to it. But the fact that Allah is so... He values the believer who uses his position to stand up for the truth. People are in a position to stand up for the truth. And they don't use it. They stay quiet because they're afraid of the consequences. Can you imagine if this man keeps sitting down and doesn't say anything because he knows, look, if I open my mouth about this, I'm going to be killed. I'm going to die. This thought is going to cross his mind. At the very, this is by the way, the worst consequence. If I speak up, maybe not only will I be killed, he's going after my, the enemy's children. He might go after my children. That man who's standing up might even say, I love my kids. I shouldn't stand up. I love my kids too much. And he still stood up. He still stood up. And I am, I'm, I'm sharing this with you for one reason and one reason alone, because my time is up. I'm going to use this last minute, I'm going to skip around, 
And I'm going to go to the end of this story. To the very end of this story. And what Allah Azza wa Jal does, Allah, it shakes you to your core. The story is over and then in Surah Ghafir, Allah talks about Judgment Day. And not just any scene of Judgment Day. Not just any scene. Listen to this. إِذْ يَتَحَاجُّونَ فِي النَّارِ فَيَقُولُ الضُّعَفَاءِ لِلَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا إِنَّا كُنَّا لَكُمْ تَبَعًا فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُغْنُونَ عَنَّا نَصِيبًا مِنَ النَّارِ قَالَ الَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا إِنَّا كُلٌّ فِيهَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ حَكَمَ بَيْنَ الْعِبَادِ Listen to this carefully. What am I trying to get across to you? When they are going to be debating with each other in the fire, there are people in Jahannam, Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. There are people in Jahannam that are having an argument among each other. Who's having an argument? Allah says the weak are having an argument with the people who used to have power. The weak, the oppressed, the people who were scared to speak up, the people who could have spoken up, but if they spoke up, there would have been consequences. The ones who stayed quiet, those are now speaking against those, to, to those who are now, who were in a position of power. By the way, both in the fire. Both in the fire. And they say, we used to follow you. Inna kunna lakum taba'an. We used to follow you. Could you help us out against this fire? And they say, no, everybody's in the fire. The real master has already made his decision. He's already made the decision. Even those kuffar say, now the Rabb has already قَدْ حَكَمَ بَيْنَ الْعِبَادِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ قَدْ حَكَمْ بَيْنَ الْعِبَادِ No doubt Allah has already made His decision between the slaves. What is He saying? What are these people saying? These people are saying, you, you, the only reason the weak are, why would you think the weak should be in hellfire? The weak are victims. Yes, they are victims. You know what their crime is? Not speaking the truth. You have no weapon in your hand. You're weak. You have no weapon. You have no military resources. You have no economic resources. You have no social resources. The one resource you have is your tongue that can speak the truth. That's it. That's it. And if you don't use that resource, then you are just as much a criminal. Because one believer standing up could have ended all the oppression. One believer speaking out. How many times do we think, we see something wrong, we don't say something, I might lose my job. I shouldn't say something. This man stood up in the, against the worst odds. What do, we have, what are we afraid of? Losing a job? Or, you know, my, my friend might get upset? Or what are people gonna say? Nobody's killing you, nobody's killing your children. And you and I are still spineless to speak the truth when it comes, when the time comes. We have to, where do we stand? Where's the integrity of the Muslim? They see something wrong and they don't speak out. What are we afraid of and what are we not afraid of? You know, if you're afraid of Fir'aun, you should be much more afraid of Allah. You should be much more afraid of Allah. And that's what he demonstrated. So the last thing I leave you with, and I told you the last thing already, but still, I want to leave you on a positive note. What I want to sh share with you is this man who spoke up. Anybody with half a mind knows, after this guy is done with his speech, he's going to get killed. He's going to, I mean, this, this general is not going to survive. There's no way. What does Allah say? فَوَقَاهُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِ مَا مَكَرُوا Allah protected him from all the evils that they had planned. Allah protected him from all the evils that they had planned. وَحَاقَ بِآلِ فِرْعَوْنِ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ And the worst kind of punishment grabbed a hold of Fir'aun and his armies. The one you think will be killed is the only one saved. And the one you think will kill is the only one killed. Because now you're under Allah's protection. When you speak up, when you stand up only for Allah, then you have Allah's protection. You will lose every other protection. And you have to believe in Allah's protection to have the courage to stand up to begin with. And when you show Allah that courage, then forget it. Then you don't need any other security. Then Allah is your security. You can't have better security than that. And you have Allah al musta'an And you have Allah whose help is sought. May Allah Azza wa Jal give the Muslims the integrity, the courage to speak the truth wherever they may be. And نقول الحق أينما كنا لا نخاف في الله لوم تلائم That we're going to speak the truth wherever we are. And we will not be afraid of consequences. Understand the truth. Speak it articulately. Speak it intelligently. But never hide the truth. Never hide the truth. 
if you don't know enough, learn more so you can speak more intelligently about the truth. But the, nonetheless, the integrity of the Muslim will never be saved. And the, the ummah will remain in adab. The ummah will remain in adab if not enough of us speak up. If not enough of, of, of us open our mouth and say something and call for a change. May Allah Azza wa change the, the, the horrible situation of this ummah and give the parents of those poor children relief and enter those children into Jannah and reunite those families in Jannah. And may Allah Azza wa remove these shayateen from this ummah that have caused this kind of suffering and pain. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an.